Oh, good morning, everyone. It is Friday. It is Fantabulous Friday. This is Carol Sue, aka Nani Boss, live with two sisters. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. And, you know, yesterday, as we know, we were on uh, about 10 hours or so ago, trending, or oh, however many hours ago it was. My math is off. Um, trending Thursday at night, and obviously we chatted a lot about what's going on in our world today. <laughs> and I just want people to know, and this is kind of my take this morning that I woke up, it's okay to protect your energy. Don't feel like you owe somebody um, an explanation. So I wanted to start out with that positive message. It is Fantabulous Friday. And what is fantabulous is that today, <laughs> excuse me, is episode number 498. Two more episodes to the big countdown, which is what won't happen technically until next week of our 500 episodes. And when we think of what, like, you know, I guess for some 500 may not, not sound like a lot, a lot. And then there'll be others that will be like, really? And then there'll be others that are in disbelief and others that will say like, what an accomplishment. Because it's, it's, it's a very, of, you know, different of opinions of what that, what that symbolizes, what it means. Uh, and for those that don't know, you know, consistency of anything that you're passionate about deserves celebration. And it is Fantabulous Friday. So we like to celebrate small milestones, small goals, because, and yes, of course, we embrace the big ones, of course you do, but the small and the little ones are the ones that are really are underestimated because we don't, we don't, we don't value the purpose of them. Like we skip over them because, you know, oh, okay, so maybe that took me less time to do. It's not going to, you know, that was easier than this. No, those were all bits and pieces that developed your mindset, develop, developed your commitment, that uh, gave you better habits, that gave you the understanding and the meaning of consistency with realistic goals that brings you to those goals that may not be so realistic, that take dedication. So we want to always embrace the, the, the encompass all of the pieces of anyone's journey with health, with mindset, with fitness, with living a healthy lifestyle, all those things. And through that journey, we also want to validate kind of the things that come at us, you know, that maybe derail us, that we pivoted around. Maybe we had to uh, pivot and, uh, you know, take a detour to another way of doing something to still get maybe the end goal or the end result of that particular accomplishment. And how do we navigate through that? You know, life is nothing but navigation. And everything that's, you know, that, that we talk about, because a lot of people say, well, why do you bring, you know, certain subject matters into a health and wellness podcast? Uh, because there's so many intricate pieces that do impact our health and wellness and our mindset. Mindset is a key piece to all the other things. And we are not always in control of what contributes to our mind. Uh, there's outside forces that may add uh, happiness, they may add stress, they may add goodness, they may add evil, like all these things are coming at us and it's a balancing act. So when you really focus on the mindset to achieve small pieces of the bigger picture that you're trying to create, that you're trying to paint, that you're trying to envision, uh, you have to do that with embracing all of these pieces, even the ugly ones, because the ugly ones are part of the journey. You don't want to forget them. A lot of people say, oh, you know, just put that over to the side. No. Yeah, you want to put them to the side, but you still got to validate them. Because if you don't validate them and understand how they impacted your journey, guess what? Those, those, those kinds of things are going to creep up at you and maybe in a bigger force next time. So part of your wellness journey is embracing everything that's going around you the good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the joy, the sad. And, you know, you take that and you put it into different compartments because they're all important pieces of your celebration of what you do accomplish. Uh, and accomplishment doesn't end. That's the other key piece uh, to celebrating yourself. 
you never start striving. You never start stop uh, wanting more, achieving more. Um, you know, you you climb one mountain. Guess what? There's another mountain ready to climb. Don't you think? Oh, it's yeah, it's it's never ending. And you know, I just think back. You know, as I was doing my power walk this morning, I was thinking back on you know 500 episodes. And think of it from the standpoint of when, when we started during the pandemic, um, the decline of daddy's um, health and how we continued on through that. And then of course he passed away and then getting through that. And then, you know, the holidays upon us and obviously the, you know, the first set of holidays about dad and, you know, going through that next year and just like, uh, it's winter time in Connecticut and, everything happening, the dogs getting sick, um, pandemonium on a little circle with the uh, shooting up on um, the uh, the connector there, Ryan's uh, life-threatening accident, like everything has been, life has happened so dramatically at so many times, but I look back, okay, I look back on the two years, but I look at all the blessings that happened with all that. And I think and that's a key piece, don't we? We always talk about them, but in the midst of all this, you know, look at, you know, not just about us. Let's look what, you know, happened to other people that all of a sudden they changed their career. They got inspired to do something that they kind of always wanted to do. And then they took that leap of faith. Uh, I know so many people, uh, actually, I've got an appointment today at nine to get my nails done. And, and this young lady, uh, Bella Nami's uh, spa in Vero Beach, you know, she, the, the salon she was at, you know, shut down with, you know, all the other businesses. And she decided maybe that's my wake up call at the same time, that same week. Uh, a rental that she'd been eyeballing became available. And she said, do you think I'm nuts? Like in the middle of this crisis that we're going in our country to open up a business. And I said, if you got the heart and the mindset, go for it. Uh, and she's been in business, uh, just celebrated her two years. That's and awesome. She's flourishing. Um, so, so many people reinvented or took what they were good at and wrapped it differently in such a way that maybe fit their lifestyle. Maybe they went out to say, you know what? I want to be my own boss. You know, we're living in, a, uh, you know, a tumultuous times with, you know, people hiring. Uh, there's plenty of jobs out there. We know that. But, you know, maybe you decided like, geez, I've worked hard all my life for this one particular profession. It's, like, it's not doing it for me anymore. It's just not vibing with me. And maybe this was the opportunity for many people. And I truly believe it was a time for us to discern to get back to basics with family, to get back, back to basics with eating healthy. Again, healthy is not a bad thing. Healthy is a very good thing because it makes you feel, uh, number one, accomplished and good, but you know, you're, you're, you're feeding your soul from the inside out, which is taking care of this fine machine. And a lot of people don't relate our bodies to a machine, but guess what? They are. They need to be nourished. They need to be taken care of. And it's nobody else's business but yours because you got to be accountable to that. That is so true. So be accountable to yourself. And part of that process is those important conversations you are having with yourself, perhaps when you're going for your morning walk, perhaps for me when I'm, I, I always say I do my very best thinking when I'm really doing a hit workout and I am just like giving it my all. And it's through that process, I think, like, you know, oh my God, can I do another kick? Like, really? <laughs> and you just, you keep going for it and you, you're, you get better and better with it. And it doesn't, like, that's my perfection. I may not, you know, I always talk about burpees and I compare my burpees with um, my kickboxing friend. Just phenomenal. She's like uh, the ballerina of doing burpees. I'm not so gracious, but I do them. I don't like to do them, but, you know, have those positive, you know, confirmations, conversations with yourself. Say your I am statements. I have my I am statement over here. In fact, I should show it. It's kind of colorful. Um, <laughs> so this is one of them. And I am, and there's like, you know, a champion. I am enough. I'm kind, valuable, unique, smart, create, smart. Most of the time, um, so forth, so on. 
occasionally I will look over to that and re remind myself, I don't have to be perfect, but I am enough. So the message that, you know, I want to share with someone who, who is maybe um, listening to the podcast or viewing it, value yourself the way others value you. You do you, you be kind to you. People will see that in you because you are putting on that life jacket, right? Or it's the same scenario as putting on the air mask before, you know, helping others. That is so important to have those healthy conversations with yourself. Be gentle and kind to yourself. That will spread, like people will see that in you. They, they do. And don't depend on others for accolades. Don't depend on others to say good job. Don't depend on others for approval uh, or confirmation that you're doing well. You are going to know inside because you're the best expert of you. You know, no one else can tell you, uh, you know, what's best for you. You already know it deep down. Uh, yeah, sure. It's great to, to, to have accountability partners. I, I'm a firm believer in that. But at the end of the day, your accountability partner can't even do it for you. They can motivate you. They could, they could uh, check in with you. Hey, I got my workout and did you do? But those are tools. At the end of the day, it's your tool belt that is going to make you succeed in your mindset, in your, your gut health, in your fitness, in your life, in your happy. Because when you're happy from within and you work hard, uh, really digging down those deeper, deeper emotions that maybe you just are not ready to share with others, but you still want to uh, deal with them to get them out. There are so many instruments, uh, good instruments that could help you succeed in that. Uh, I often say to somebody, you know, if something's really bothering you, you don't really want to talk about it with people, talk to yourself, have that, have that conversation in the mirror, and then maybe write it down and burn it. Do your own little symbolic symbol that is going to release and let that go. Um, there are some things that are too difficult for people to share, to talk about. That is perfectly okay. Um, sometimes I think, you know, especially with social media, sometimes we have a little oversharing. Um, and, you know, you kind of wonder, you know, when the, that person that, and we all have those, you know, we all have those news, news feeds where, you know, you, you, you see that person, they're constantly putting out negative vibes, you know, poor me, why is it happening to me? And what is the first thought that comes to your mind? Well, for me, it means that this person is seeking either approval, attention, uh, or drama. One of those three, uh, because, you know, sometimes you have to look within yourself and that's not always easy. We know that self-accountability is probably one of the hardest things that we all do. But, but the fact is we all have to do it because none of us are perfect. There's only one perfect being that I know of, well, three, and they, they are constantly overlooking at us uh, what we are doing. And that's why somebody, I had this conversation with somebody, gosh, it was a while ago. Well, actually it wasn't too long ago. And we were talking about heaven, hell, you know, purgatory, the old purgatory, which nobody even talks about anymore, but that was from the old Catholic school days. But someone said to me, what would be, you know, what, especially once they heard how, how our dad had passed away and the miracle that we saw him being received into the Lord. And they said, so you, you know, in, in your mindset, I go, well, it wasn't really my mindset. It was actually occurring. Uh, we witnessed it. Um, so yes, I, you know, always believed in heaven, but to, to receive that affirmation is even, is like the icing on the cake tenfold. So they asked me then with knowing that, what is your interpretation of what hell is like? I said, oh, hell's living. And they thought that that was, that I was joking. I said, no, I'm serious. I said, because we, we, we have, uh, the ability, uh, that we are infiltrated with choice. Uh, we are infiltrated with uh, making choices of right and wrong, good and bad, evil and not, you know, e evil and good. So to me, that's what, what really, you know, that torment, we're always in that torment of, of trying to do right by others and making the right choices for ourselves and, and because they impact other people. Uh, are we impacting the world in a positive way? Uh, and if we're not, then we're going to, uh, 
a misdirection of what I, I believe uh, and what we've been brought up of, you know, with faith is that, you know, we should mirror, you know, and again, uh, we are not preaching anyone's uh, particular religious beliefs, but we believe that, you know, we are supposed to mirror the image of God. Now, are we always, always perfect with that? Absolutely not. Uh, that's because we're human and we're not perfect. And God knows that. But he did create us, in my mind, create us in his image. So, you know, when we look at other people, we're supposed to see the reflection of our Lord because that's, you know, his interpretation, I believe, of what we're supposed to do. So, you know, it really, at the end of the day, it's up to us to uh, validate things that are going on in our world, validate things that are going on in our community, validate what's going on in your own home, uh, your health, your wellness. Those are all things that you're constantly reevaluating. You know, could I do it better? Do I need to change up my schedule? Am I allowing enough time for self-care? Because I think, you know, people years ago, and again, it was the propaganda, and I truly believe it was the propaganda of something even bigger. It's probably a subject matter we haven't talked about, which we're, uh, I'm working on uh, a couple of different ways of doing it. And it really has to do with the whole feminist movement. Uh, you know, back in the day, you know, the feminist movement was a positive thing. And I, I see some deterrence in that right now. And I never thought I would, would say that. Uh, you know, equal opportunity. Um, instead of, you know, equal, equal for all, equal opportunity. Uh, but let's not forget that there are things that women can do that men cannot do. Uh, and there's a purpose and a reason for that. So we're, you know, where we grew up with milk does the body good. And we were so over inundated how dairy was good for us. And here, you know, 30, 40, 50 years later, we're realizing that's not true. That was an eye opener to me to reflect on things that we learned you know, in the 50s and 60s that really are not true. And why is that? Why were we so over inundated with our mindset to a certain piece of what people think or a conglomerate of people think we should be? So it's interesting to, to kind of re, re, relive the past. And then now you scratch your head and say, what were we thinking? And that's part of, you know, evolving. And the evolving part of, you know, as we go through time, and as you said, you know, looking back to when we were growing up and, you know, specifically talking about dairy. I mean, I remember as a little girl, do you remember um, the milk container outside? And I remember specifically waiting for the milk guy to show up with the gallon of milk because, you know, it did and not actually it wasn't even a gallon. It was a quart. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't last, but what a no. day if that no, and you you couldn't because it was fresh milk mm -hmm. from the cow not processed in the same way that things are processed today and that's you could put that analogy even with coffee or with a lot of things they're just not made the same with mm -hmm. all the injections and hormones and god knows else what else speaking of coffee it, i saw this commercial last night now i know you don't like coffee no. um i still well, I, like that I don't like coffee uh, I did like coffee. Okay. Uh, I just I just don't crave it anymore. I so I drink I, like coffee. I don't drink as much because I you know I'm back on thriving. It's not just because I'm back on thrive. Like right. I cut down dramatically. So I love turning on the TV as soon as I get into bed, even though I'm exhausted. And this commercial comes on, and it's about coffee, and I'm like, oh a new coffee. This is cool. The, you know, and I'm, I didn't have my glasses on and I'm kind of like rubbing my eyes. The voice sounded familiar. And then I put my glasses on. I'm like, what? The, um, Mike Lindell from my pillow now has my yes. pillow coffee. Well, ironically that you say that, let's see how great minds think. Uh, last night, John and I sat down to watch a little bit of TV and <laughs> He goes, what the heck? And that commercial came on with him and coffee. He's so entering you, out. You can order your slippers and order some coffee at the same time. I mean, like, think about that. How good is that? So, right. My coffee. 
I, I mean, you know, and, and so many people do, you know, they enjoy that good cup of Java. Uh, you know, obviously I'm Larry of, you know, well, not Larry. I know the way that it's processed. It's just, unless you're growing your own coffee beans and drying them and grinding them. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of it. Cause it's just, there's too many, there's too much chemicals they put in. Uh, and, and which goes to show you when back in the day, you know, when we were little and our naughty would brew coffee, fresh, fresh coffee. And back then, you know, Italians, even with kids, we, we drank coffee. Um, you didn't have that crash in the whole craziness that's going on. Uh, that has a lot to do with the chemicals that they put in there. Oh my and God. again, it also goes back to, you know, what we talked about, I think a week or two ago, where manufacturers have different standards depending on what country they're in. And if you look at the United States and you compare it to all the crap that's put into some, some big name brands, and you look at the same packaging that's over, say, in Europe or somewhere else, where they don't have the chemicals because other countries have stricter laws. So why does our country think it's OK to add dyes and all these chemicals? But yet European countries and Europeans, uh, I think, traditionally live longer. You wonder why. Oh, exactly. And, you know, think of the like I, the other day I was talking about ice cream um, and the two quarts of that ice cream that I or and it's, you know, vegan ice cream. Yes. Um, Did you find the name, by the way? It's so, S-O. But S -O. you know what I'll do is I'll take a, um, I'll screenshot it and send it to you. Yes. Yeah, so everyone I, that's I, so, for those that I, want. I take a, a spoon and, mm. but anyways, so those two little pints or whatever they are, they're expen, they are, I'm not going to lie, they're expensive. And that's why I only have like, you know, I take a, a tablespoon and, grab a big scoop of it and of course you know that's my little little dessert the the organic or anything that is really good for you is so expensive so and that's ironic because <laughs> we want to eat things that are good for us but there's not a lot of organic are good things that are um affordable is what I'm trying to say right um, you know and that that's you know for me right how sad, now how sad is that when you think about it you know you try to eat healthier and yet to buy something that's you know organic or you know has less chemicals preservatives that's fresher costs more shame shame exactly you know it, it it, it's crazy when you think about it. And um, I am almost to the, you know, I'm always talking about the garden. Like now it's to the point where like, you know, and I have to be very careful, of course, of anything with seeds in it. So I'm very mindful of that. Like I just want to cut up a tomato and, you know, eat it. And I can't wait for a tomato sandwich. Oh my God. Let me tell you. On the the vegan bread that I buy, um, toast it in just a little bit of mayonnaise, just because you don't need a lot. And it's just so good. Do you have veganaise? Do you use veganaise? No, I have uh, Hellman's. Yeah, see, I, I'm so into the uh, veganaise because it's just, it doesn't taste it. Even actually Hellman's has come out with a vegan brand. Yeah. And it tastes no different. So I'll have to make sure we get a jar of that while I'm there because I, I have not been using regular mayonnaise. I only use vegan mayonnaise now. And yeah. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. But I'm looking forward to that red, juicy, ripe tomato sandwich. And I know that sounds a little bizarre to people, like a tomato sandwich. But when you have a really good, juicy, red, ripe tomato, like you said, with toasted bread, little mayo. Oh, it is so good. Hey, I remember a certain someone in our family having an onion sandwich. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that I wouldn't do it. Well, red onion, I might do like a tomato and a red onion. I would do that, but not a regular onion. No, no, not a fan of that. If we won't say who it was. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep that to ourselves. But on this fantastic Friday, what are you celebrating? Make sure it's you. Have a conversation with yourself in the mirror. 
you know what? If you need a reminder, just sit down and quiet for 15 minutes. Think about what you accomplished, no matter how small it is, and celebrate it. Today is a day that you pat yourself on the back. You say, good job. Uh, and, and don't go, well, you know, I only half did this or I only did a quarter of that. That's what not today is about. Today is about celebrating what you did do. That's what we want to applaud. Because when you accolade yourself that way, you give yourself the accolades because you don't have to depend on anybody else. You just have to depend on the reflection, the person in the mirror. Uh, you will increase your accountability. You will increase your percentages of completing tasks uh, when you celebrate yourself. All the small ones, they lead up to the big, big ones. And with that, this is Carol Sue, AKA Naughty Bus, live with two sisters. Hey everyone, it's Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 5.0. Have a fantabulous Friday, a fantastic day, and we shall see you for Monday Mindset 499 and counting down. Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Have a great weekend.